What a great campus we have uh, from our faculty, our staff, our students. Um, <clears throat> so first and foremost, I want to thank each of you all for being here today, uh, for what you do every day, for what you do every semester, for what you do every year. Boy, that faculty staff handbook. You gotta, I, I think I remember that in 97. <clears throat> but certainly, as I think we've seen in our awards that we've uh, made, our university strength, our greatest asset, our true intellectual capital are our people, and we've recognized some of those today. Uh, and certainly, I want to assure you that when I consider our people, I am confident that we have great, great strength here at the University of Alabama. And uh, speaking of, of, of new people, and Donna uh, sort of touched on that, we have a number of new folks who uh, uh, are either new to the university or, or are new to their position, certainly not new uh, to, the, to, to the university is Kevin Whitaker. Kevin, would you stand? I think you're in the back. So, <clears throat> so Kevin has agreed to serve in a new position for him. He's serving as interim provost, and Kevin, I appreciate your willingness uh, to be doing that. Uh, David Grady is new to the university, joined us this past summer. So David is Vice President for Student Affairs. Uh, sitting next to him is Bob Pierce. Bob, would you please stand? So Bob joined us uh, last month as our new Vice President for Advancement. Um, and in the interim, we had someone who did that, Calvin Brandt. Calvin, would you stand up? Calvin did a great job, but every day he reminded me, have you made that appointment yet? Have you made that appointment yet? So I know he celebrated as well when we welcomed Bob to that position. And uh, again, just last month we named Linda Bonin, who's not here, but Linda's the new Vice President for Strategic Communications. Linda will be joining us early next month, and um, I know you'll welcome uh, her when she gets to campus. I also wanted to uh, thank each of you. Just take a moment uh, for your gracious welcome to Susan and I as uh, we've joined the university this past summer. Uh, we had lots of receptions. Um, we have shaken lots of hands. Um, we've had lots of food. Um, but uh, again, we could not be more excited and more honored to be back at the capstone. I've had the privilege of, I think, meeting with all well, we're probably about two-thirds, maybe three-quarters through meetings that I'm having on campus. So probably most of you in this room, I've met with you as a college, maybe as an administrative group, as a research group. Again, I haven't uh, finished all those meetings, but, um, but I thought I would give those who haven't met me a little bit about my background. I grew up in Texas. I attended Texas A&M, a small cow college in uh, South Texas. <laughs> Uh, forgive me, I'm an engineer. I received my bachelor's degree in nuclear engineering, my master's in mechanical engineering, and then I went out and worked for a research and development corporation for a couple of years before returning to uh, complete my PhD degree. Susan and I then moved in 1986. Susan was only four, um, <clears throat> where I joined the faculty as an assistant professor of mechanical engineering. Uh, when I came to the university, my passion for research, my passion for teaching, and being at the University of Alabama assured me that I was at a great spot. And I thrived on a lot of things. I thrived on uh, building my laboratory with, uh, with a number of my colleagues. Uh, several of those may be in the room now. And we enjoyed working with wonderful graduate students on uh, projects and in fields that we felt were important to our fields and, and made contributions to those. And of course, um, I loved working with the students that I taught. Uh, well, most of my students know with the students that I taught, and I taught my students that thermodynamics was a great book to curl up with. <laughs> if anyone in this room, I still keep several copies of that book, would like to have one, uh, please stop by and I'll let you borrow one. I'll check it out to you. <clears throat> in 2002, I began what would become an extended sabbatical from the University of Alabama. Um, I moved to the University of Kansas, where I was dean of the engineering school there for 10 years. KU was certainly a great spot for me and our family. We'll always remember it. Um, it was a place where we were able to work to make great changes uh, in those programs and that campus and to serve those students and uh, uh, those research programs. In 2012, we extended our sabbatical by moving to a small college in Baton Rouge 
where I served for three years as executive vice president as well as the provost there before returning this past summer to the University of Alabama. So Kevin, I'm not sure if that counts, but that's my sabbatical report. <laughs> But now as I have completed the first few months here, I know several of you have asked me and I get asked as I, I go to faculty meetings or staff meetings, what's the first few months been like? What do I see here at the University of Alabama? Where do I think that we're headed? So let me take just a few moments maybe and share some of my observations that I've made uh, to date as well as uh, maybe looking forward. As I mentioned, my first priority <clears throat> has been to meet with lots of people, and I have met with lots of people. But I think that's appropriate because, again, when we talk about our intellectual property here, it is our people. So how can you lead a group if you don't know your people? You don't know the, what's the aspirations, the dreams, and what's on their mind. So let me chat with you a little bit about um, what I've done. So again, much of that discussion has occurred in, with our faculty, with our staff, with our students. I'll start with the faculty. I've been able to meet with the faculty in both large and small intentional discussion groups, as well as events like last week's dance concert uh, in Morgan Hall was a great time to meet with both faculty as well as students. The Cuba Dedication Center last week, the Analytics Lab Dedication at the Culver House, the week before that, WVUA Celebration and our new di digital media studio, just to name a few. Um, I went to the College of Community Health Sciences meeting, and as a parting gift, the staff gave me a flu shot. <laughs> they did a great job, no sting. I think they could have really stuck it to me, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, bad. Uh, but seriously, our faculty and staff are what makes this university such a great place and was such an attractor for me as I look to come back. So thank you for all you do, again, every day. I've also spent much time with our largest subset of individuals on campus, and that is our students, and what a great student body that we have. They are engaging. They're here to learn. As Elliot explained, they are appreciative of what we faculty and staff do for them every day. Like faculty and staff, I've spent a lot of time, again, in large groups, in small groups. One event that sticks out uh, in my memory was Onyx. Uh, so Onyx was back early in uh, September. All of the ingredients were there for a great meeting. We had great students there. I mean, the turnout was fabulous. Uh, and with student meetings, you got to have good food. We had loaded baked potatoes, high carbs, lots of energy in the room. It was in the Ferguson Center. And then the final ingredient was a big thunderstorm that locked us all inside Ferguson Hall for a couple of hours. So seriously, it allowed Susan and I just to spend some very casual time sitting on those couches, moving around. Uh, we met one student who was homesick, who had just uh, moved here, was a freshman. We met another student group that uh, just had some interesting tales from their summer exploits. Another student who uh, was actually the sister of the student government body president at the University of Kansas when I was there. So got to talk with her a little bit about uh, Wade and how he was uh, doing back up in Kansas. But again, a great, uh, a great outing. And Susan, I've found that our students are absolutely delightful. We do not tell them that until they become alumni, but they are absolutely delightful. The final group that I've intentionally spent a lot of time with meeting are our alumni and, and supporters. Most of our colleges, most of your colleges have advisory board meetings and I've been able to meet with many of those since the very beginning of the semester. Uh, what I have found is number one is that our colleges are very well connected back to the people they serve. So we have done a great job here at the university of doing that. The other thing that I found is that those groups spend time and honor us with their time, talking with our students, looking at our programs, interacting in a way that is, adds great value to each of our programs. So whether it's nursing, arts and sciences, engineering, honors, so many of those that I have met with, I'm finding that our alums and supporters are giving back. They are very complimentary of you, our faculty, and of you, our staff. And of course, they are providing very generous support back to our programs. I saw more of our alumni as I walked through career fairs last month. We had about 200 companies, if you don't know, that were on campus interviewing our students, interacting with our faculty in Coleman Coliseum. I was pleasantly surprised to run in 
to more than a couple of my former students from my previous career here who are now out interviewing for their companies and needless to say, the fact that they're coming back and what they were able to tell me clearly says that they're liking what we do, what you do, in your classrooms and with our curriculum every day. Finally, outside of Tuscal Tuscaloosa, I've spent time to visit with friends of the university. I've made multiple trips to Atlanta, actually where I'm headed right after this meeting, back to Atlanta. Birmingham, where we have numerous alumni and faithful sponsors, Dothan, Montgomery, Dallas. We had a group meeting there with a little over a thousand of our alumni in Dallas. And I had many more trips planned again this afternoon as well as the rest of uh, this semester, building on those relationships that you all have really planted the seeds uh, with our students as they become alumni and go out and want to give back to the capstone. I've also found a beautiful campus as I've returned, a campus that I got lost on the first couple of days uh, because literally roads had changed but also a beautiful campus and I know we have a lot of staff here and many of our staff, I just want you to know you all care for this campus like nowhere else I've been. And I want you to know how important that is to all of us because the many, many students that I've stopped, even last Sunday as I was walking across campus, I ran into two groups of students and their parents who are from out of state who could not believe what a beautiful campus you all create for us every day. Please keep doing what you're doing. And we continue to develop new facilities to support our research, our performance, our teaching activities. Uh, we recognized a few uh, projects earlier that we were dedicating. Uh, we have many other renovations underway, many other new buildings that are coming up and we will continue to create a great campus for us. There's a new classroom building going up just off Hackberry on the former Bryce property. It will be completed uh, by the summer, but again, we will move at all speed to complete those projects. In the fall, we also welcomed another record-setting and great incoming freshman class. Um, this is our second class. Elliot, yours was our very best class that we've ever had. <laughs> they have higher academic credentials than we've had before in terms of high school GPA as well as ACT scores, as well as increased ethnic diversity. We continue as a university to serve more Alabama resident students than any other institution in this state. So we've had a lot of growth, but we also have growth that we're serving Alabama residents. We also have great growth with out-of-state residents, and that provides a diversity, geographic diversity, that serves both our in-state as well as our out-of-state students very well in terms of their being able to interact in students of great cultural differences across the United States. It's truly been a great first few months and weeks for me here at the University of Alabama. A clear thread that um, had been reflected in my meetings as in the faculty senate survey that Donna mentioned last spring was to establish a dialogue that answers where do we go from here. I believe that our university has arrived at what I will call a spotter's point and we all know what a spotter, uh, spotter is when you're hiking it's, it's a spotter of where you're going so a place that we can look forward from. As an analogy, it reminds me of we are at the precept of a great excursion and that's exciting for me because I think this excursion is one of those time of your life type stuffs for a university. That it's life changing. That there's unknowns. And for faculty sometimes we think about unknowns as being risky, but that's okay. I think we need to be risky because I think the rewards for setting our expectations high are going to be there. When we talk about a great excursion for our university, there's really two key questions whenever you're looking at making a great excursion. And the first is, where exactly are we now? Where are we as a spotter looking forward? And the second question is, where are we going? Well, I think there's some things that we know about where we are. We are a national flagship university and will continue to move forward in a manner that reflects the strengths, the positions, and the responsibility that we hold 
as a national flagship. Secondly, we have, as we've recognized today, an exceptionally dedicated faculty and staff and a great student body. We have alumni supporters who are committed to be our partners. And we've got a lot in this room. We have a lot of people at the university. But expand that out with over 100,000 alumni and supporters. We have a lot of committed partners. We also have a lot of data that we can look through that will give us more information on our current longitude and latitude, if you will. That's where we are and whether we're talking about discovery, teaching, or engagement in terms of our longitude and latitude. And I think it's important to note that while we've made great, great progress over the past many years, that we still find ourselves, as represented in that survey, still driven to achieving new and higher destinations. So in general terms, I think we know where we are. So the second question is, where are we going? And I get that question a lot, don't I, Donna? Yes. <clears throat> and I think that's the work at hand. And so I think what I would ask is I would ask that we characterize the answer to that to be a great excursion for this university, a life-changing excursion for all of us, a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's okay to be risk-takers. We should dream, and we should dream big as a university. We should establish the tenets that will ensure our place as a national flagship university, as a national research university, as an institution of prominence among universities over the coming years, and that we will work together in achieving those goals. To that end, I've asked Kevin Whitaker and all of our leaders to work with us to begin a discussion for establishing this forward-looking plan for our campus. Among other things, this plan should be a high-level plan that is consistent with a dynamic university that will be making accelerated strides of accomplishment in the coming months and years. It should be a plan that embraces the dreams of our campus and will ensure the vitality of being able to attract the best and brightest scholars across the world to our campus. I see significant investments being made to grow our greatest asset, our people, over the coming years. This plan should reflect our desire to move our research, discovery, and performance achievements forward in a very substantial way. It should be a plan that prepares our students for the globally connected world that they will be a part of as they leave our campus and go out to effect great change in the world around them. And finally, it will be a plan that provides a teaching learning experience for all of our students that is unmatched. Dr. Whitaker will be working to swiftly launch this discussion in the process, and it is my hope that we will make this, we will all make this, a first priority for our campus. I anticipate that there will be many dynamic elements that we will refine and tweak each year, but it is imperative for us to achieve a foundation foundational guiding plan as soon as possible, a capstone from which we can grow and evolve this master plan as we move forward. The excitement of the excursion is well beyond the plan. As a faculty member, I love to plan. But let me tell you, the fun of an excursion is what? Getting started on the excursion. So again, it is my hope that we'll move quickly through our planning effort so that we can begin that excursion. I would see ourselves releasing this plan, talking about this plan, the next time that I come to visit with you in the spring. So that's the starting point and the finishing point. We start today and we finish before our next spring plan. So in closing, <clears throat> I appreciate uh, what each of you all do. I appreciate the welcome that uh, you all have provided, Susan and I, as we uh, have moved to Tuscaloosa. I want you to know I could not be more excited to be with you. I could not be more excited to be making our university and our programs the best that they can be working with you. I'm excited about the excursion that lies before us and the commitment that I know each one of you has for this university for working together. It's a great day at the Capstone. Uh, congratulations to all of our award winners that we've already recognized and roll tide.
Tennessee. Thank you all very much.